Hi everybody, in this video we'll be going over redox reactions past paper questions, including what you see over here, as well as this question over here. Our first question asks us to define the term oxidation, and that would be that oxidation is the loss of electrons. Remember, oil, rig, oxidation is loss, reduction is gain of electrons. Then they say from the balanced equation above, write down the reduction half reaction, formula of the reducing agent, and then they want you to explain your previous answer by referring to oxidation numbers. Now, when given a balanced equation such as this, there's a few ways to determine which substance has been oxidized and which has been reduced. The easiest in this case is using oxidation numbers. So remember to check out my video on oxidation numbers if this still confuses you, but essentially we know that if an element stands by itself, even if it's diatomic, in this case it's copper, its oxidation number is zero. So copper is an oxidation number of zero, so does silver over here, even though it has a big two in front of it, this doesn't influence it, its oxidation number of silver Ag is zero. Then we've got Ag+. Plus charge of plus one. So if you have an iron like this, the oxidation number is equal to the charge on that iron. So plus one. And over here, we've got copper two plus Cu two plus. So the oxidation number is plus two. Then if we compare copper on the left hand side of the arrow, oxidation number of zero to copper on the right hand side of the arrow, oxidation number plus two or two plus, what happened to that oxidation number? It's increased, and an increase in oxidation number means that oxidation has taken place. And it makes sense. If the oxidation number has increased, what has happened is it has gone more positive. And when will you become more positive? If you lose electrons, you become more positive. If you lose negative things, you become more positive. Remember, oxidation is loss of electrons. So clearly, the copper was oxidized, it lost electrons, and that's why it became more positive. On the other hand, the silver, Ag+, plus, had an oxidation number of plus one, then it went to zero. This shows that there was a decrease in oxidation number, so it went more negative, okay, decrease. It went from plus one to zero, so it got more negative, and getting more negative means that it gained negative stuff, so it gained electrons. That means that Ag plus was reduced. So reduction took place in this case. It got more negative. It gained electrons. Oil rig. And that corresponds with a decrease in oxidation numbers. So back to the question. What is the reduction half reaction? Now we just said that the reduction half reaction involves Ag plus and it involves Ag. So what happened? So on the left hand side of the equation we had Ag plus. On the right hand side of the equation we have Ag. Just ignore the big twos over here. The reason they are there is because those big twos help me balance the net reaction, the overall reaction. But in the reduction half reaction, we re went from Ag plus on the left hand side to Ag on the right hand side. And we know that reduction, oil rig, oil rig, reduction is gain of electrons. So Ag plus must have gained an electron to form Ag. If you can't do this off the top of your head or by using the oxidation numbers or just like I did, you can also look at your table. So I make use of table 4B, standard reduction potentials. And as you know, it shows all the half reactions. One very important thing that will always work is that if you read a reaction from left to right, it represents reduction. So what do I mean? I mean, if you take any of these off of the table and you read it as you would read a book from left to right. So in other words, this stuff goes first, then an arrow, and then this stuff that represents reduction. If you reverse that, so if you flip that around and you read it in reverse, if you read it right to left, that represents oxidation. So if you take a look at the table and you look for our Ag reaction, this one over here, Ag plus, plus E minus arrow, Ag. That, there's our half reaction. Just keep your eye on that one. If you read it from left to right, as in what I mean by that is you first write down the Ag plus, plus E minus, then you write down an arrow, the arrow will always point to the right, and then Ag, if you write it like that, it represents reduction, and that's exactly how I've written it over here. If you had to reverse this thing, so what I mean is if you had to first write the Ag, then the arrow, and then Ag plus, plus E minus, this is wrong, because this represents oxidation, and we know 
that Ag+, plus, Ag+, plus, the silver ions, are being reduced because their oxidation number decreased. You actually get two marks for writing this as is. Please take note how your arrow always points in one direction to the right. It's never, ever a double arrow. I know it's written as a double arrow on the table, but when you write down a half reaction, it's always with a single arrow. Next question, write down the formula of the reducing agent. As we just mentioned, Ag+, plus, not silver, Ag+, plus is the substance that is reduced. You could ask why is it Ag+, plus and not just Ag. If you look at the table, it's the Ag+, plus that is gaining the electron. So Ag+, plus is reduced. You can also say that Ag+, plus is the oxidizing agent. It's just the other way around. If you are reduced, you're the oxidizing agent. Our question asks me, who's the reducing agent? Well, if this situation here, the Ag plus the Ag, if that's representing reduction and oxidizing agent, then the other one, the copper to copper two plus, that is going to represent oxidation and therefore the reducing agent. So copper is oxidized, therefore copper is the reducing agent. And they want the formula. So you're not going to write out the word copper. You're going to say Cu. And just to show you, what, what would the net, or what, sorry, what would the oxidation half reaction look like for that? So we start with copper on the left hand side, then an arrow, and we have copper 2 plus on the right hand side. And what did we say oxidation is? Oxidation is loss of electrons. So the copper is going to lose electrons to form copper 2 plus and the electrons that it lost. Again, if you don't know how I wrote that or it doesn't make sense to you, find copper on the table over here. And then like I said earlier, because we know that it is oxidized, we know that oxidation is always read from right to left. So if you visit the table, this half reaction that I'm looking at, we must read it from right to left. In other words, you write the copper first, then the arrow, the arrow always points to the right, and then the stuff. So therefore, we don't even have to think, we can just use our table to help, help us write down the half reaction. But back to the exam question, Give the explanation for our answer in 7.1.3 by referring to the oxidation numbers. So we will say the oxidation number increased from zero to plus two. That shows that it's oxidation. So it's not just enough to say that it increased. That would get you one mark. You have to say how it increased to get the second mark. Our next question says the following incomplete chemical equation represents a redox reaction. First thing, they want me to determine the oxidation number of Cr in Cr2 O72 minus, a nice tricky one. Let's break it down. So this is an ion that they are giving me. And this ion has a charge of negative two. And that means that the sum of the oxidation numbers within this ion needs to add up to negative two. So we've got Cr2O7 minus two. That means that our numbers are going to end up equaling or totaling to negative two. The next thing that we need to know, I'm going to create a little box over here for oxygen and a box over here for chromium, CR. Now we know that the rule says that oxygen, when it's inside a compound like this, has an oxidation number of negative two. We also know that there's seven of them in this compound. So this, let me actually write this underneath. We've got negative two and we've got seven of them, so times seven. That means that over here, I've got negative 14 inside my little box. Now, please note that the oxidation number of oxygen is still negative two. There's just seven of them inside this iron, which makes this section of the molecule, this section or iron or whatever, the section of the iron, have an overall charge essentially, or number of negative 14, negative two times seven. That means, and you can treat this like algebra if you want. We've got something minus 14 equals negative 2. So if it makes you feel better to treat it like an algebraic equation, call this x. So basically we've got x minus 14 equals negative 2. So then we know negative 2 plus 14. So x should be 12. Now what that means is that inside this box there must be an overall charge or number of 12. What this means is that this part of the molecule has a charge or a number of 12. But I have two chromiums. So if two chromiums together give me a charge of 12, what does that mean? One chromium, one CR gives me 12 divided by two. So therefore the oxidation number is six. 
and it's a positive six. Now, what's nice about these questions is they give you two marks with just the answer. You don't have to show the working out, but I do find it useful to do the working out instead of just guessing in my head. And just also take note that if this charge over here, the charge of the iron was minus three, then this would equal minus three. If this was plus one, then this would equal plus one. And that's why neutral compounds, like for example, H2O or something like that, there's no charge up here, so it must equal to zero, basically. 7.2.2 says using information from the table of standard reduction potentials, which is a table that we've already discussed in this lesson, write down the balanced net ionic reaction, clearly indicate the following, reduction of reaction, oxidation, and then obviously the balanced net ionic equation. And they give me the incomplete reaction over here. So how we do this is we take a look at the incomplete equation, and we, from this equation, we have to pull it apart, and from it, pick from table 4b, the reduction half reaction and the oxidation half reaction. Now, how I do this is I take a look at what's given to me, and I pair things up. So what do I mean by this? I think it's quite obvious that in in the given equation, we've got Fe2 plus on the left-hand side over here and Fe3 plus on the right-hand side over here. So these two go together and we know that we should probably find a half reaction on the table that is Fe2 plus on the one side and Fe3 plus on the other side. Now, just because Fe2 plus is on the left-hand side over here and Fe3 plus is on the right-hand side over here, when I visit the table, it might not necessarily be that way around, if that makes sense. Then I've got Cr2O72- minus on the left-hand side and Cr3 plus on the right-hand side. And these two are connected and go together. I'm going to try and find an equation, a half reaction on the table with this on one side and this on the other side. So let's go take a look at the table and see what we can find. I've taken a snapshot of the table, but I hope that you can see over here, here is a half reaction with Fe3 plus on the one side and Fe2 plus on the other side, just like I've got over here. 2 plus and 3 plus on either side of the arrow. So there's my first half reaction. And then the other one that I'm looking for had Cr2O72 minus on the one side and 2Cr3 plus or Cr3 plus rather on the other side over here. There we go. Cr3 plus, Cr2O72 uh, minus on the other side. So there's my two half reactions. Now we know that one of these represents the oxidation half reaction and the other represents the reduction half reaction. We now have to establish which one is which. There's a few ways to do this, but if you look at the table 4B in general, you'll see that it has two big arrows on the table. The one on the left points downwards. I cut it off over there, but it points downwards. And it says increasing strength of oxidizing agents, and it points down. And on the right, we've got increasing strength of reducing agents, and it points up. What this means is that if we take a look at the right-hand side of the table, like over here, the higher up we get on the table then you are a stronger reducing agent, which means if you sit higher up on the table, like these substances over here versus these substances over here, the higher up you sit on the table, it means that you are a stronger reducing agent, which means the higher up you are, stronger reducing agents, more likely to be oxidized. Oh, I'm spelling that wrong. Oxidized. And then the lower down you are on the table on the left, you are a stronger oxidizing agent, so the more likely you are to be reduced. So a nice, quick, easy way to remember this is once you found your two half reactions, the one on the top is the one that is oxidized. The one on the top is the one that is oxidized because the higher up you are on the table, you are a stronger reducing agent. So my first half reaction that I come across, the one at the top of the table is oxidized, and the bottom one is reduced. Very, very important. So how do we do this? Let's write down the oxidation half reaction first. We always write down our oxidation reaction, our oxidation half reaction, as I said earlier. I mentioned it up here. We write it down from right to left. So the first equation we come across, we, we say, okay, cool, it's this one. This is our oxidation half reaction. We write it down backwards. So we say Fe2+, plus, Fe2 plus comes first, then an arrow, and then Fe3 plus plus E minus, like that. And it does make sense looking at the equation that was given to us in the question paper. On the left-hand side, we had Fe2 plus. On the right-hand side, we had Fe3 plus. Look here, left-hand side, Fe2 plus, right-hand side, Fe3 plus. 
Again, it also should make sense that the oxidation number was plus two and then it increased to plus three. An increase in oxidation number means oxidation took place. So this is definitely the oxidation half reaction. Then the reduction half reaction, the second reaction you come across, this one, is the reduction half reaction. And as I said earlier in this video, the reduction half reaction, you read it from left to right. So as if you're reading a book. So just like it's written here from left to right, that's how you write it down. So basically like this. So everything on the left hand side, I wrote down first, then I'm doing an arrow and then I'm doing two CR3 plus, plus seven, H2O. You may have noticed that I shifted this one a bit to the right. The only reason I did that is because I like to try and line up the arrows in my reactions. You'll see why I do that now. So we've got the oxidation half reaction. We've got the reduction half reaction. Now we need to write down the net reaction. But our first step is to, we have to balance the electrons. So what do I mean by that? In my oxidation half reaction, I've got one electron. And in my reduction half reaction, I've got six. So I need to make the number of electrons equal, which means I have to times this by six. If I times the electrons by six, I have to multiply everything by six. So I'm just going to rewrite the new half reaction like that. I have to multiply each substance by six, put big sixes in front essentially. So I'm not looking at this one anymore. I'm looking at this one. Now I've balanced the electrons. So I may cancel out the electrons. Now I keep my arrows underneath each other. Everything on the left-hand side, I rewrite on the left-hand side. So in other words, this, this, and this, I rewrite it over here. Be careful not to write the electrons by accident. And everything on the right-hand side, I rewrite over here on the right-hand side. And that's it. That's it. That's my answer. I hope that this was helpful for you. Please check out more videos linked in the description below. And please subscribe if you haven't yet. Bye, everybody.